welcome to Pace and Hill Farm. We figured we're gonna have a lot more friends than normal <laughs> um, because down here, you can kind of see really his head. See. We got a baby emu. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's been a lot of questions with our normal friends and family. So we're gonna do a Q&A. Chris has just along for the ride. I <laughs> been taking all of our Instagram follower questions and Facebook and then our own family's questions. So Chris will pipe in when he can. Uh, mm -hmm. There you can. go. Oh. But he's in a baby carrier right now. He has a little bit of a separation anxiety right now. <laughs> so he's just sleeping. You'll hear him peep in, but we'll get into the questions. So I guess the first question is why? <laughs> why do we get him? And we say him when we really don't know if it's a him or not. Yeah, we'll get into that though. Okay. Um, but how it all started is we actually um, watched other homesteads and farm channels and we found the Cog Hill farm probably a month ago. I don't even know yeah. if we've been watching them that long, but they have a baby emu named Nugget. And Cute. I'm like, but like never really thought that we would get one. Oh, sorry, our dog belly is like right at my feet. And, um, just thought it was cool and then a, a couple of Facebook chicken groups and this guy posted that he had nine baby emus for sale. so I just messaged him and said hey we're just doing our research right now like what's the process like um you know I don't I don't know anything about emus so like yeah they're all spoken for but um they made this time of year so next year on this time which is March um message me and and you can get one so i'm like okay cool and i told chris and we were good with it and that must have been money now he's sticking his head up there he is he says what are you talking about that's turbo <laughs> he said i was sweeping um so that i think that was on a monday yeah i think it was monday so then thursday at two o'clock the guy messaged me and said, I have a chick available. And that's what they call baby emus is chicks. I have a chick available. And that's all he said. So Chris is on a Zoom call and I'm like dying. And so he gets off the Zoom call and I said, hi, what'd you say? <laughs> so what'd you do? And I said, uh, Jeff messaged me and said that there was a chick available. And he's like, just do it. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so we went and we, drove the well it was like an hour hour, hour and, half. and a half to get him um through a mud pit it was like off like i should have had a four-wheeler it was awful it was really bad but we got him and um the we got i think we were one of the first people there because there was a lot of baby emus there and i picked up one i was like what do you do how do you how do you pick up how do you choose yeah <laughs> which one and so i picked up one and it was kind of squirming and I just didn't have a good vibe, I guess. So then Chris is chatting to the guy because he has like buffalo and... Red deer, some exotic animals yeah. on his farm. And uh, so Chris is chatting. So then I picked up this little guy and just spoke to me. And so we brought him home. And so right now he's a, day, a week. A week and a couple days. Yeah. So him, week and a half. Yeah. <laughs> it was little. Him very little. <laughs> and why we keep saying him is with emus, unless you have the shell that they were born in, um, you can't tell if it's a girl or boy. You would take the shell and you would uh, send it in for DNA testing. So we're just, it's easier to say him. So we're going that he's a him right now. Um, but we won't know if. Turbo is a girl or a boy until, ooh. He's jumping. He does like to jump. <laughs> he is. What are you doing? What are you doing? You want to be a different area? And when we uh, think he was able to finally calm down in the car, he wasn't too bad. And then he fell asleep. I held him the whole way for the hour and a half. He, was fat. he likes to cuddle. Yeah, he liked to jump too. And jump. <laughs> So yeah, anyway, so when, uh, we'll find out if Turbo's a girl or a boy when he gets a little bit older. Um, Probably a year, right? Yeah, I think the Cogs Hills did theirs about eight or nine months. They have to grow their feathers out. And um, right now he's just, it's kind of like a weird fur feather field. 
kind of like a coarse like it's very coarse it's different than chickens where they have this like silky feathers yeah like he kind of has like it reminds me of like a schnauzer yeah kind yeah. of like that's a good yeah fur ish so um once he gets a little bit older we'll do the dna testing and find out if turbo is a girl or a boy mm -hmm. do you need a permit and shockingly you do not need a permit i didn't know this to or own like, did the an research. exotic animal <laughs> Like there should be some regulations, I would think, but you don't need a permit to breed them. You don't need a permit to own them. They're just like hanging oh, out. Why did we name him Turbo? We named him Turbo because, so I, I grew up with a, a cat that's still alive. She's 18 years old and her name was Turbo. It was given to me for a high school graduation present. And it's still with my mom and dad and Tur our cat Turbo isn't doing so well. And so we want to, we want to have the name continue on and Turbo just fits, I believe it fits yeah, him really because well. he's super fast <laughs> and they'll be able to run up to like 30 miles an hour when yeah. they're full grown. So Turbo is a great name for and, Emu. And it can be a girl or a boy. Yeah. Name, he's kind of peeking out. And uh, we wanted like something to call, like a nickname. So we call him Turb -turb. Like, Turb -turb or Turby. <laughs> Turby. Turbo. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> um, what? So here are like some questions that people have been asking. Um, what does Belly and Ashley think? So, so Belly's our dog, our Great Pyrenees. Belly is, even with the chickens from day one, Belly is incredible with little things. She's a Great Pyrenees, so she's huge. So it's such a discrepancy between size, but she does so well. I mean, this morning we had Turbo out running around and ran right underneath her and didn't even care. Didn't care at all. So she's she's great. Ashley, I don't, I don't think know. She's doesn't kind of scared. care. She's scared. She doesn't uh, she doesn't like when we bring like chickens into the house. We've had to do that a couple of times when they're sick, and so we'll bring them in and separate them from the flock and get them better. And Ashley just stays away. So that's kind of the same with. I think with they Turbo. were per they're prepared for like animals coming, different animals, I guess, coming in yeah. and out. Another question we got was, what about his mama? Well, Turbo and all of his siblings were hatched in an incubator so um no mama needed and just a fun fact is that the moms will lay like a cluster of eggs and then the dads are the actually ones that I sit did not know that. yeah the dads sit on the eggs for 56 days really yeah wow insane and then when they hatch the dads actually raise the babies for 18 months before they go off on their own. So, um, so him looking at me for, yeah, he'll say, Hey dad, Hey dad, <laughs> what you doing? And then it's like, well, turbo lay eggs. Well, we don't know if turbo's a girl or a boy. Um, and then if he does end up being a girl, they, the females, um, lay up to five or 15 of like, they're like avocado shaped eggs and they're ginormous. It reminds me of like Jurassic Park. You know, they're dinosaurs. Are, yeah, yeah, they are. They're like dinosaurs. And they lay their eggs. I, I don't know if you're going to get to this and if there's another question, but I think my brother even asked that of when they lay their eggs. And they lay from January into March is their season. And because they're on Australian summer. Yep. And, and they know it. They know it. Even though they're here and totally away from Australia. Uh, they keep that cycle, so they lay in our winter time. And what we should say is that the guy that we got um, Turbo from, he does have an emu farm, so that's how he got the eggs. Yeah. Um, so he has, he raises them to then uh, go off to be butchered, but he also sits, sells some for breeding purposes. So um, it's not like he bought the eggs somewhere and just incubated them and was like, oh, here's some random eggs. So I guess. Turbo does have a mom, but like didn't get to spend time. Yes. <laughs> is when can we meet Turbo? When can we meet Turbo? Yeah. Whenever. <laughs> I don't know. So we're gonna, if you're around here, come on over. Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> raise him up, have him be a little bit older, slowly get used to other people, um, and then we would certainly welcome farm farm tours. I think um, that's another reason that we got him. Um, that first question of why we got him is we're trying to grow our homestead in our farm. Uh, I think it's really exciting for people that come and stay with us for Airbnb to have different things that they can see and do. And so obviously we have all the chickens and now we have him. 
and we are also getting four um, Scoby ducks. Right. Um, I ordered the ducks prior to knowing that I was gonna have a baby emu. Um, so we'll have that. Um, like Chris said, we do have an Airbnb for those people that don't know us. It's the cabin and caboose in the back of our property. property. Yeah. And so we have a lot of people coming because of the chickens. So I think the baby emu is going to bring That's right. more yes. curiosity. Does Turbo eat? So when we got him, the breeder, I guess that's what you would call him, Jeff. Yeah. Um, he was feeding them K like diced up or crushed up kale and carrots. And so we're doing that as well. Laura's been doing that. And then- Do you want to show it actually? It's right there. Yeah. Just crush it up or blend it up, blend, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah it blend it up for a food processor. processor and get it really small. So he does that. We put a little eggs in there this morning. You don't want too much protein because they can get leg kind of injuries issues, yeah. or issues. And so you have to keep it under a 20% protein mix. So the other thing I guess that you can do is they have specialty food. I forget what it's called. We did some research. Laura did a ton of research before we Yeah. Did. So I guess we should say that like, we didn't just like out of a whim, like I'm like, I, Jeff was like, oh, it's available. Like I've did a deep dive of like, I guess research. Once you saw a nugget. Yeah. So Cog Hill Farm, if you ever see it. <laughs> it's all their oh, fault. Oh my gosh, you guys are so fun. We, <laughs> we spend a lot of time watching you guys. So shout out to them. Uh, if you guys want to go watch another Homestead video, yeah. they are fantastic. Yeah. I'll uh, put the really link great. that of down below of the one that like really sold us that we could <laughs> we can have our own nugget. Turbo will eat the kale and carrots for a little bit. We'll actually start um, adding in the... Um, it's like chicken starter. Chick grower. Yeah. yeah. Um, for a little bit. Uh, I got to get some specialty rabbit food. And he kind of eats that until he's like six months old and then slowly starts over to a grain diet. Very similar to a toddler. You don't want to um, introduce a whole bunch of new foods right away. You kind of just take it slow. Can he fly? No. You sure? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> because <laughs> I, I believe that uh, the wings on nugget from cog hill farm are very very small and I, and I don't even think i can see them on turbo yet very t like baby little chicken mm. not even a chicken wing like and little nub um where will he live in the farm i guess so where is he living now he's living in the house <laughs> right now and will be for i think four, four weeks. weeks um kind of like baby chicks they need to be under a heat source and monitor just to make sure there's no issues so we have a dishwasher box that we've used as a chicken hospital, a chicken, um, brooder. chicken brooder, and now it's a emu brooder. brooder. <laughs> yeah. And where will he live when he gets big? We're thinking in one of the stalls of the barn. Uh, we'll have to clean clean it out because right now that's storage. used for storage, and so we have two horse barns uh, horse stalls, stalls in, in the our barn, far side of the barn. Um, so we'll keep him there. He like snow if he's from Is Australia. It, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Is it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. Um, we haven't I, taken him outside yet. Right. We won't this year because he's too little. But from the research, um, another family that we watch is the White House on the Hill. And oh, yeah. they have three emus. And um, they like the snow. So I think it's the same with like our chickens. They, I don't think we exposed our chickens enough to the winter. But other people's chickens love the winter and have no problem. Ours do, huh? So we just need to, we'll do a better job of exposing them early. Yep, and then do you say emu or Oh my emu? gosh, I, and I go back and forth. We, growing up, we had an emu farm close <laughs> to us, and so I just, I guess it rolls off my tongue different ways every time I say it. I say emu. Emu. We, no, see? Emu. <laughs> it does, it goes tomato, it, tomato. Is it emu so. or emu? Um, how Somebody long? else comment yeah, and say, how do you know. really pronounce it? Um, how long does he live for? Do you know? I think it's 15 to 20 years. 20? 15 to 20. 15 to 20. But in good captivity, 35. What? <laughs> so we're going to have Turbo for a while. Um, Holy moly. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> um, does he need a buddy? Um, so it's mixed reviews. Um, I think right now because he was... I mean, he's a week old, so I'm kind of trying to, they say that they'll imprint on their owners, um, like their people. 
So that's why I'm snuggling him a lot so that he doesn't have that need to like need to be with the buddy. Um, but they also do good with farm animals. And we're doing this research off of um, the Coghill farm. Like Nugget was hand raised and is around chickens and ducks and all the things and is thriving. So we'll monitor that. Yeah. Will he be friendly? And I guess. It, it kind of goes along what Laura was just saying. Yeah kind of get them to familiarize their, yourself with the humans and you touch them and love on them early on that they can be extremely friendly like like a dog and so that's what think, we're trying think to think large chicken that acts like a dog that's half dinosaur that's not right <laughs> um so can you ride him when he's a full-size adult <laughs> that's that question our friend wendy <laughs> Can you ride him? Yeah, do you know? I would say no. No. So ostriches, I guess you can do that, um, but the emu is a little bit smaller than the ostrich. It's this, so the ostrich is the number one large largest, bird. Yeah. yeah, and the emus are second, it's a cousin. And so what I found from research is that, no, you can't ride this little guy. Can't oh, ride my, him. My hair is in the way, since that, that tastes good. How tall will he be? Our research research has told us anywhere around around six feet is what they say. Depending so. on the male, if it he's a male or a female, and the females are actually taller. So be tall as tall as Laura and I, pretty much, or just a little, a little bit taller, bit taller than us. About taller. five nine. Yeah, five ten. So yeah, a little bit. Taller. When will he be full grown? I think it's at two years that they're full grown. Right? Yeah. How much will he weigh? <sighs> Seen a no. range, 100 to 150. 40 to 130. How's, how's 40? I don't know. That's what the research said. So I'm assuming really? 40 is like in the wild maybe because they're not thriving. But and then some of the research said 80 to 132 just depending on male or female. I'm figuring somewhere in the 120, 130 range, which is a big animal. <laughs> It will be, I mean, obviously it's the biggest animal on our farm, even uh, bigger than Belly, because Belly's what, 80? Yeah, 80. 80 pounds? Yeah. 88? So we already uh, um, answered that he can get up to 31 miles an hour, um, but he can also jump. Um, what I've seen from research is six and a half feet. So this was the piece, <laughs> uh, this was the piece that got me staying up at night when we got him, is we... If you do follow us, you know that we did a big fencing project for Belly, right. but the fence is about four feet tall, maybe a little higher. Um, and they say that you need to have a six foot tall fence yeah. so that they don't jump over it. But from the videos we've seen, again, with like Congo Farm, they don't have that big of a fence and, you know, Nugget runs around and is able to come right back to them and doesn't run off. So. I'm still debating if we're gonna do a big long run and I'm gonna do a big fence this summer or not. But I guess I got time because it takes two years for him to get full grown, so. I've we're hoping the more that we handle him and, and around him that he will not have that instinct to want to run off. Um, like Nugget likes to run away. Oh, hi. <laughs> hey. Uh, run around, but doesn't run away. So hey. we're just gonna play it by ear. They bury their, hand, their heads in the sand like an ostrich. All I can think of right now is the Limu Emu commercial where they're playing volleyball <laughs> and he puts his head in the sand. I don't know that answer, but if the commercial got it right, I would say yes. Wrong. Oh, the commercial got it wrong. <laughs> um, just ostriches do that, I guess. Really? Where can I get one? Oof. You know, unless it's from somebody like Jeff, the, the breeder, I, that's where I would get one is breeder. I don't know if, if hatcheries do it. I'm not sure. I don't think hatcheries do. You've got to find a breeder. Um, here in Maine, there's actually a few. I think there's three. I, I don't think Jeff really advertises that he's an emu breeder um, per se. Maybe he does. Um, but there's two like designated businesses that if you Google, but there's actually, uh, I think it's worldwide if not definitely the united states website if you just google it and it'll pull up all of the breeders um and where you can get one but i definitely recommend doing your research having the land for it um obviously the commitment that they're yeah. going to take 
Um, I mean, we know in the long run we want to have, what do we want to have in the long run? Lots of animals. I would love to have a cow, yes. So we know that we're in it for the long haul of growing our farm, our homestead, and this was just an extra little bonus. You gonna pull him out so they can see him? Him sleeping. Oh, yeah, he is. <laughs> so we'll cut to some footage that we got of him running around. Um, and then we'll just keep you guys updated as he grows and gets bigger and yeah if you have any more questions i mean this is kind of fun actually to yeah do it's, it's it's us this is you know just us being real and oh there he is do you want to come out. come out and say hi yeah um yeah i probably yeah. should little guy hey turp turp so he's all striped right now so he's very he's squirmy <laughs> squirmy, squirmy and very non uh, agile right now. Clumsy. But he's got a little baby wing kind of like right there. It doesn't even really look like anything. You want to say hi to our friends? There you go. Say hi, everybody. Nice <laughs> oh, what that? That you? He likes to kiss. <laughs> oh, Nelly says. Is there someone here? So thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thanks for being interested in Turbo and. We'll keep you updated. What did we do? Took a baby. The baby has separation anxiety and we're going to get lunch.